Hello there and welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 29 entitled Network Security Groups. My name's Tim Warner. Happy to be your instructor as always. Our objective from the AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals objective domain, starts with Describe General Security and Network Security Features, drills through Describe Azure Network Security, and our goal today is to describe the functionality and usage of Network Security Groups, also called NSGs. The idea behind the network security group is that as you deploy virtual machines into an Azure virtual network, those virtual machines are running an operating system like Windows Server or Linux, and they have a firewall built into their software. But beyond that, it's up to you to apply controls in Azure to protect inbound and outbound traffic. That is the network security group. The NSG, as it's called, is a stateful packet filtering firewall. Now, what does all this mean? You may not be a technical professional, so you're wondering. Well, a firewall can be hardware and or software, in this case it's software, that looks at or inspects each network data frame or packet. We don't need to get into the weeds about Ethernet frames versus IP packets, but the network communications and the firewall explicitly, you configure it to allow desired traffic and drop or deny all else. In a nutshell, the NSG is going to protect your virtual machines in Azure against things like denial of service or DOS attacks or brute force attacks, for instance, when malicious people try to break in to commandeer your virtual machine. The NSG operates on the basis of five properties called tuples or tuples. The rules in the NSG involve source and destination IP address, source and destination port number, and protocol. Now, if you're thinking, Tim, what the heck does all this mean? I thought that AZ-900 is not necessarily a technical exam. That's true. If you're not an IT professional and you're not particularly strong in TCP IP networking, then welcome. I'm going to take you by the hand and give you what you need to know for the exam. And I, as I normally do, I go a bit beyond for those who are active IT professionals. But we're going to see here that the rules are relatively basic compared to say Azure Firewall, which we're going to cover in the next episode of this series that can operate at the Open Systems Interconnection or OSI Layer 7, which deals with things like DNS, internet names, and so forth. With NSGs, it's all allow or deny rules based on these five properties. Also, the NSGs have separate rule sets for inbound and outbound rules. We're also going to see finally in the upcoming demo that Microsoft gives you three inbound and three outbound security rules by default. You can't turn them off. That is, you can't disable them. Neither can you delete them, but you can override them if you need to. You associate the NSG at one or both of two scopes. The Virtual Network Interface Card, or VNIC, is how the virtual machine in Azure gets its TCP IP configuration, its IP address, and so forth. And you can also associate the NSG optionally at the subnet. I strongly recommend that you associate your NSGs at the subnet level, and I'll explain why. First of all, this topology that comes from the Microsoft documentation, as usual, you can see the attribution in the lower left, shows VM3 that's located in subnet 2 in this virtual network, and it's being protected by an NSG that's associated directly to the virtual machine's NIC, or network interface card. On the other hand, VM1 that's located in subnet 1 is being protected by not one, but two NSGs, one at the network interface and one at the subnet. This can cause some big troubleshooting headaches because the rules will be additive and they could conflict with each other and cause problems. The most common guidance is if you've divided your virtual network into subnets according to VM role, for example, let's say VM1 and VM2 are both web servers. So we would presume, I think, that you would want the same inbound and outbound traffic rules for both of those boxes because they're doing the same thing. For that reason, we could do just one NSG and associate it with subnet 1, and those rules would apply equally to both VM1 and VM2. There are cases, though, legitimate business cases, where you may need to further restrict traffic, and that's why Azure allows you to associate the NSG at the network interface level as well. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you some of the basic elements of using a network security group or NSG to protect a virtual machine. 
We're here in the Azure portal looking at a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine I named MyVM2, somewhat imaginatively, right? <laughs> we can see on the overview page that the machine has a public IP address here of 52.177.242.235. I can also tell you that I've installed the Microsoft Internet Information Services, or IIS web server software, on this virtual machine. So we want to, let's say as a business goal, have a public website accessible from this machine over the internet. However, if I copy this IP address to my clipboard and attempt an HTTP connection against that public IP address, you notice that my browser is just spinning and spinning and spinning, and I can tell you it's eventually going to time out. What exactly is blocking that HTTP connection? Well, let me stop the browser here and let's come back. And in the VM, let's go to the networking blade. And this is a good spot to just get a sanity check on how TCP IP configuration is set up for a virtual machine. Specifically, I want you to see here that it says the network security group VM NSG2 that's currently attached to the network interface is impacting the traffic. And the VM blade here, the networking blade in the VM context, allows you to add a rule directly. But instead, what we'll do is hyperlink out. Let's go directly to the network security group that I've created. And I'm choosing, in this case, to bind the network security group directly to the VM as opposed to the subnet. That's OK in this case. If I look at my inbound settings, these are just the default inbound rules that Microsoft gives you. And like I said, you can hide them. That's what this little eye does. But that doesn't disable them. And you also can't delete them. If you come over onto the right and try, you're going to be blocked. And they're really good, though, actually. They're helpful. First of all, the allow VNet inbound, what it's saying is it allows any traffic on any port protocol from a virtual network to a virtual network. And this also works within your virtual networks. And that rule will facilitate VM to VM traffic in your virtual network address space. If you're using an Azure Load Balancer, that Azure Load Balancer will need to periodically send health probes to the virtual machine, and that's what this middle rule does. And then lastly, in keeping with what any good firewall should do, if a previous rule doesn't match, just drop it. Deny all inbound, any port, any protocol, any source, any destination, deny that connection. And just for completeness, if we look at outbound, we have the same virtual network to virtual network allowance that we saw for inbound. Likewise, we also have a deny all outbound. As you might have put together thus far, these rules are evaluated one at a time. The higher priority rules have the smaller or lower integer numbers. They're, they range from 100 to, I think, 4,000 something and Microsoft intentionally labels these default rules with super high priority numbers to make sure that they're evaluated last and that would be how you can override one for instance so we have this middle default outbound rule that takes any port any protocol from any source in your VNet out to the internet to allow and that could be a problem for some businesses who don't want their virtual machines to go out to any internet resource in fact that's something that is tough to do with NSG rules. You wind up having to create quite a few rules. If you want to just allow your VMs to go to particular websites, let's say, and block all the rest, we're going to have to go to a more sophisticated firewall like Azure Firewall to accomplish that. In this case, we're going to go back to inbound security rules and click add, and we're going to create a new rule. Now, there's basic and advanced views here. I'm going to click the basic button because we're just dealing with high-level stuff. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds. And it's convenient because when you choose the basic view, you can just choose the protocol that you want to allow or block, and you don't have to remember the port number or anything like that. HTTP is what I have running on that web server, so I'll select that from the service list. I'll leave the default priority. I'll give it a new name, allow HTTP in. And this doesn't even give us a choice to allow or block. In the advanced view, there's a lot more choices and flexibility that you have. I'm going to just roll with this, though. So I click Add, and you can see in the notification area, we've got some action happen happening. It's creating that security rule. And there it is. So there's our new rule. And because that's a rule we created, if we decide to delete it later, we're free to do that, as you can see. Now, you might be wondering, now, do we have to create a corresponding outbound rule to allow TCP? 
TCP port 80 out? And the answer to that is no. These NSGs are stateful packet inspecting firewalls. Now, what is stateful? We can just look at it to say that the firewall is smart enough to understand that if inbound traffic on TCP 80 is allowed, then any return traffic on that port will be allowed automatically. In other words, the state of the network communication is taken into effect. All right, well, let's come on over to the other tab and let me again do an HTTP call to that public IP address, press enter, and there is the home page of that virtual machine. I just have it say this, hello from my VM2 virtual machine. And those are the basic elements of the Network Security Group, or NSG, in Microsoft Azure. Learning resources, let's go into the Azure Docs. First of all, the shortcut URL for the Network Security Group documentation is timw.info forward slash NSG1. If you want some more general guidance from Microsoft on Azure Network Security, it's timw.info forward slash NSG2. There's a lot of good information in that particular article. And lastly, something that's decidedly not on the exam objectives, but you do have to know a lot about if you decide to pursue the Azure Administrator and or solution Solution Architect badges is application security groups, which really is a special custom kind of rule you can create for your NSGs, where instead of specifying ports and protocols and IP addresses, you can arbitrarily include virtual machines and their associated network interfaces, and then use the ASGs in your NSG rules. It's pretty cool technology. TimW.info forward slash NSG3. Thanks very much for joining me. As always, I appreciate you. In our next episode, as I mentioned earlier, we'll cover Azure Firewall, which is a logical extension to what we covered in this episode. Of course, like and subscribe. You know all the deal with that. Twitter, I'm at Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site, long form courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com. See you later. Take good care.